Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, we've been talking about factoring as it is with solving quadratic equations. Now in future videos in this series we'll be taking square roots or completing the square even using the quadratic formula but this video is problem set one and we're going to be reviewing the factoring method. So grab a piece of paper and give these a try. I'd like you to try numbers 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And remember in factoring you want to get everything over to one side, usually the left side. And then you want to factor it and that will give you your two possible answers in most cases. Alright, give it a try and hit pause and come on back. Number four, I get two answers for x, positive three and negative four. I hope you did too. Well, here's how we do that. Notice how the k squared is by itself, so I'm going to need to subtract 12 on the right and the left, and I'm also going to have to add our k term. So, and it gets a little bit squished here, but basically everything on the right disappears. Now I have k squared plus k minus 12 as my quadratic equation and I take a look at factoring that and I know I'm going to have a k and a k here. Um, I need to find two factors for negative 12. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative and I do need to end up with a k which is a 1k. Well I'm thinking of 4 and 3 so how about k plus 4 and k minus 3. All right, now remember that when we do this factoring method, each binomial could be a possible answer for zero. So k plus four equals zero, and that's why we get negative four. And k minus three could also be zero, and therefore k could be also positive three. So there are two positive answers. All right, moving on to number five. If I add 24 to each side, now I have three x squared minus 17x plus 24 equals 0. Now when I factor it, I know that I have to have a 3x in one group and an x in the other group, and then I need to try to find factors for 24. Now this video really isn't all about the factoring method, okay? There are some other um, videos I have that deal with that topic, so I'm going to kind of go fast over that, but the idea is get everything over on the left equal to zero and then we factor it. It just so happens that we're going to have a th minus three and a minus eight factor that would work. Now in the first group 3x minus eight could be zero and x minus catch up here x minus three could be zero. Well obviously x equals positive three in that group all right, but in this case, I'm going to add 8 to each side, so 3x equals 8, and I divide both sides by 3. And therefore, I do get 8 thirds and positive 3. Number 6, we're going to subtract 3p from each side and subtract 9 from each side. So here's my quadratic equal to zero, I'm going to factor it. I know that in one binomial I have to have 2p, in the other I have to have p. And then I need factors of 9 that are going to work. Let's try 3 and 3. And make it positive and negative. Now just kind of doing my middle terms here, that's going to give me positive 3p, and these will give me negative 6p, and that will give me my correct middle term. So 2p plus 3 equals 0 and p minus 3 equals 0. So p equals 3 
which I already showed right here. And I'm going to subtract 3 on each side, divide by 2 on each side, and that's why I get negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves and 3. Let's move on to number 7. All right, my quadratic is going to be 2n squared plus 11n plus 5. And when I factor it, I'm going to have a 2n and an n, and a 1 and a 5. And I notice the signs here. Everything's going to have to be positive to make my middle term work out correctly. And so n plus 5 equals 0. That's where I get my negative 5 answer inside that binomial. And then if I set this equal to 0 for my other answer, let's take a look. I'm going to subtract 1 on each side. So it becomes 2n equals negative 1. I'm going to divide each side by 2. And that's where I get the negative 1 half. So two answers for x. All right, number 8. Here's my quadratic. 49m squared minus 35m minus 6. Now for 49m squared, I'm going to guess right now that it is going to be 7m and 7m, um, I don't think it's going to be a 49m and a, a 1m because 49 looks too large of a factor. So I'm going to go with 7m, 7m. And how about the 1 and the 6? Okay, now let's kind of try out our signs here. I'm going to say that the 1 is positive and the 6 is negative. All right, now the middle terms, the inner terms there, 1 times 7m is 7m. And 7m times negative 6 is negative 42m. And that does result in our negative 35m middle term. So that's going to work. Now we're going to set each of those binomials equal to 0. So we'll try that. And we will try this. We're going to subtract 1 from each side. and add 6 to this side, both sides in that equation. Divide each side by 7 and that will give me my negative 1 7th answer and divide each answer by 7 here that will give me my positive 6 7th there. Alright, a little exercise with factoring and this is solving quadratics. Thanks for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.